But okay, let's get into the Sweet Baby Ink stuff. Here's what I understand it to be. And then, chat, you can yell at me because I'm misinformed because I haven't been paying attention. Does that sound good? Are we good on that? I've got a couple articles pulled up, a few clips pulled up. I think we're good. Oh, let me get rid of this. Okay, there we go. Uh, so it's my understanding that some, uh, some, some gamer that wanted to get all these whores out of video games decided to create a Steam group that brought focus and attention onto a narrative constructing company, which would that uh, narrative crafting company called Sweet Baby Incorporated. Now, if you were to go look at this Steam group right now, it's fucking ridiculous. Sweet Baby Inc. Detected has roughly 228,000, oh, yeah, 228,932 members, probably more, with a sole purpose being dedicated to tracking games that have involvement in their development with Sweet Baby Incorporated. Now, you might be asking yourself, why would anybody care? Uh, like, Steam is probably, like, one of the last vestiges of where you can go and say shit, honestly. Now, I know that they've given more mod tools and creative powers to game developers and publishers. Back in the day, you could say what, really whatever you wanted. Um, now they've kind of curtailed it a bit. And you can find yourself temporarily banned from saying things on certain uh, game forums or, you know, creating threads or leaving comments or even fucking reviews. But still, for the most part, for the most part, uh, Steam is pretty fucking based when it comes to letting you say what you want to do, creating your own little groups, uh, or even doing this curator thing where you can create your own following where people can come by and see what the fuck's going on. So somebody out there creates Sweet Baby Inc. Detected, and it talks about this company. And it talks about this company that works with video game developers. So what do they do? What is their uh, mission in the video game sphere? Well, they talk about D, oh, is it DEI or DIE? Whatever the fuck it is. Diversity, equity, and inclusion. So these are fun buzzwords. I'm sure you've heard them before. There is a massive push by larger companies than Sweet uh, Baby that, well, they essentially pay you to do it. Talk about companies like BlackRock and others, Larry Fink and all these people. That you need a certain amount of uh, people of a certain variation working for you or in your products or in your advertising or in your marketing. And if you do that, you get rewarded. And Sweet Baby is kind of like a small version of that. They're a video game uh, centered version of that larger ESG shit. So they come into a company and they say, hey, uh, your video game doesn't have enough uh, black lesbians in wheelchairs. Hey, your game doesn't have enough transsexuals. Hey, your video game doesn't have enough gay men in it. Uh, you need to really think about that. Or, hey, you know, more than that, you know, it's not just your game, but it's your company. Your company doesn't have enough of that. You need to hire more women, more minorities, more sexually different people, uh, because that's part of diversity, equity, and inclusion. We have these guidelines. You need to hit them. Uh, we're going to help you construct a, your narratives. It's all out of double talk, really in regards to what they're doing, but it's forcing uh, diversity for diversity's sake on companies and on their creations. That's my understanding of what they do. Uh, that's my understanding of the whole purpose of what they do. And they probably make a fucking lot of money doing it. Because what's better than getting a rubber-stamped approval and showing everybody how compliant you are with this shit when you're developing some kind of a product? I don't think anybody's blind to the fact that over the last five years, every video game company that exists, whether they're the big console manufacturers like Sony and Microsoft and Nintendo, or they're a third-party giant like a Capcom or, you know, formerly a Bethesda, or even some of the small and middling people, have been really jumping in on the whole idea of corporate diversity, equity, and inclusion. Every time there's a special day on the calendar, they're out there with a rainbow flag. They're setting up funding for development in relation to projects about minorities. I believe after the BLM stuff and the, the uh, Floyd riots in the 2020, uh, Sony in particular, I think, did like a giant, kind of am I remembering this right? They did like a giant fund where they gave like $25 million to develop black video games or some, some stupid thing like that. that. And it was really that vague, too. It was just like, <laughs> here's $25 million for black people. Please don't get angry at us for any reason whatsoever. Look, we've got a transsexual flag. Look, we're the good guys. So they're out there doing that. You've got a company rubber stamping everything doing this. And they're looking at their involvement and what games they've been involved in. And shocker, a lot of the games that this company has had uh, their hands on or the companies they've worked with, all the products turned out to be shit. It made a lot of people start to do a double take and think, oh, maybe, maybe these products are crap because of this involvement. Maybe the focus should be on fun video games and fun video game shit 
rather than teaching me a lesson about diversity, equity, and inclusion. So anyway, to, to sum up this story, uh, they make this, this, this curator page, the Steam Group, and this sets off a, a firestorm. The company gets upset. I don't have the screen cap. I'm sure you've all seen it. You don't need me to pull this up to really prove it. You can go look it up yourself if you need to. But uh, I believe it was one of their employees uh, got very fucking angry and wanted this Steam curator page, the Steam group taken down, and then wanted the person's Steam account erased as well. They didn't want just the curator page, you know, the Sweet Baby Inc. detected page taken down. Uh, they wanted them to lose access to their Steam account. They wanted them punished uh, by losing access to all their video games for daring to say, huh, this is pretty stupid. And it's not even like what they said. I mean, fuck, wasn't that South Park episode make everything uh, black and lame or gay and lame or whatever it was? You know, where they go to like an alternate dimension where everybody's like a black woman or a Latina. And that South Park episode came out like a month ago. So, you know, like, this is basically the real world version of this shit. Uh, but yeah, no, they need to be punished. They need to be taught a lesson. Oh boy. We're going to, we're going to come after them. And so it's, it starts a fire. So we're going to look through some of the articles and I'll talk a little bit about it. But of course, everybody's popping up. All the old characters from the last time around from Gamer Gate are popping up. You've got Anita out there having fake weddings. <laughs> I don't even know what the fuck. Like, what the hell? This, I want to, this is, I'm going to say this is an aside. This isn't even, I'm going to pretend I don't know who Anita Sarkeesian is at all. Right? I don't know who you are at all. I've never heard of you before. And I'm just going to take what I'm reading on its own. I did not get married, but I did have a wedding-themed birthday in Stockholm this summer. It was goofy, silly, and fun. We had a bachelor party, rehearsal dinner, ceremony, and reception all in one. People dressed up in the best costumes from brides, divorce lawyer, drunk uncle, and a ring bearer. Massive thanks to everyone who helped me pull it off, which was a lot of people, and everyone who traveled from different continents and countries to come party with me. I, it, wow. That is... That might be some of the most cat lady shit I've ever fucking seen in my life. Like, Anita, pump the brakes. What the fuck are you doing? I, I, I'm so lonely. Oh, God. All I have are the cats and the wine. Uh, for my birthday, we're going to pretend it's a wedding and you're going to treat me like a fucking bride and I'm going to wear this present. Oh, God, Jesus. It's very fucking sad. Anita, <laughs> Jesus Christ. This makes me pity you. You've made me pity you. I am pitying. This is so sad. I hope it's like an edit. I hope somebody out there is being funny and clever and this is like a fucking edit. Because that's the saddest shit I've ever read. In fact, we should introduce Anita Sarkeesian to fucking Mersh. Like, the amount of cat energy I'm getting off of this, those two are like a match made in heaven. They could sit together in that lonely apartment, green screening cat videos till the sun goes fucking dark. And all the heat energy of the universe disappears. Female, female cop doggo wedding bride. Of course, you got Sargon out there. Here he's making the rounds. He's popping on a couple of, he's popping on a couple of podcasts, talking about GG a little bit. Or maybe. You hear what I, I don't know, chat. What do you think? Can we make this happen? Is it time to mend fences a little bit, chat? Is it time to make this happen? Are we going to go for it? <laughs> Anita. I don't think you've even read Locke. <laughs> now put the ring on, you silly bitch. I think that, I mean, come on. That's a power couple. Come on. It's time. It's time to make it happen. Having little babies, they Applebee's. Yeah, I haven't really seen, uh, you know, I have to be honest, I haven't seen Sargon's take on this. I don't actually know what he said about it. All I remember is what he previously said. So let's go to the audio. Let's go to the tape. Let's, Jamie, can you pull up that tape of Sargon talking about Trump? Well, what you're building up to sure sounds dumb, but okay, I guess I can admit I'm wrong. If you've got a better angle, let's hear it. Yeah, I do. I do. Are you ready? Uh, yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah, we are. Yeah. I reckon we can get Donald Trump to defend Gamergate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that was the last time. <laughs> that's, that's a brilliant idea. What if we got Donald Trump to talk about Gamergate? Brilliant. Fantastic. It was amazing. Clearly. Clearly the way to win over everyone. 
it might happen. This might finally be the time. It might finally be the time to get Trump to talk about it. So, guy creates a curator or a curator list talking about this company's involvement. Company employee or somebody connected to the company starts running their mouth, wanting to get them uh, dealt with. This, of course, Streisand's this and more people talking about it, which, of course, they can smell it in the water. Games journalists decide that they need to start writing articles about it. You know, talking about, uh, like, I'll, I'll show you a few uh, selected articles here. Let me pull up, uh, let's start with Kotaku here. Of course, why wouldn't we? Sweet Baby Inc. doesn't do what some gamers think it does. No one company, or no, one company is enforcing diversity into all your favorite video games. Oh my god. Um, can you fucking disgusting uh, little piggy gamers understand that? Uh, we're not forcing anything? Let me just show you what not forcing things looks like. Just, you know, just for the fun of it here. Oh, I know it was, I know it was here somewhere. <laughs> god, shit. Had it all lined up and then, oh, here we go. So you'll see that a lot of these articles, we'll read through some of them, but you'll see that a lot of these articles say that this company isn't forcing anything, that they're not doing any, they're not, they're not causing harm to the companies or to gamers. First off, bullshit. Uh, the very first thing they did was try to fuck with this guy's Steam account and make him lose his video games. I mean, all the shit, he, if he lost his account, he can't play the shit he bought. Let's be honest with that. Uh, and then when they say we're not forcing companies to do anything, well, Games Nosh posted a clip. The co-founder of Sweet Baby Inc., Kim uh, Belair, probably explains the methods she uses to force game studios to censor and work in a way that's conducive to what they want to happen. So uh, let's take a look at that. Remember, Kotaku out there saying they don't do this. Let's hear from the, uh, the horse's mouth itself. Um, if you're a creative working in AAA, which I did for many, many years, um, put this stuff up to your higher ups. And if they don't see the value in what you're asking for when you ask for consultants, when you ask for research... Go have a coffee with your marketing team and just terrify them with the possibility of what's going to happen if they don't give you what you want. So I want you to go out there and terrify people uh, and make them understand that if they don't obey us, uh, there are going to be consequences. That sounds kind of like you're forcing shit to me. I don't know. I think maybe that Kotaku article might be wrong. You know, in the very first byline that it's got up there, no one company is enforcing diversity. When you literally have the person that runs the fucking company saying, oh, no, we're forcing diversity. <laughs> we're going to terrify you. Uh, and I love that this is like at a convention. They're at the Game Developer Conference, proudly boasting about this. This is back in 2019, by the way. Of course it's in San Francisco. Of course they're openly saying this. They don't give a shit. So let's just uh, quickly skim through the rest of the article. I just wanted to open with that because I found it funny. Uh, that the very first thing that you find after you read something like this is that person saying exactly that. Uh, Sweet Baby Inc. is not the largest narrative design company in the games industry, nor is it solely responsible for the characters and stories in recent high-profile releases like Alan Wake 2, God of or War Ragnarok, and Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. But good luck telling gamers that! Late last month, one of the company's consultants discovered a Steam group dedicated to detecting games that Sweet Baby Inc. had worked on. The purpose? to encourage people to avoid those games because the group had deemed SBI was pushing a woke agenda by working towards greater diversity, equity, and inclusion. The stream group now has more than 100,000 followers. Actually, it's closing in on 300,000. And this was published on Wednesday. Today's Friday. So, <laughs> this this group is exploding, by the way, and the amount of shit that's, that's going on. But, I, you know, I'd like to ask a couple of questions, really, when you're looking at this. The first question I would have is, um, when we're talking about narrative development companies like Sweet Baby Inc., when they say it's not pushing diversity, equity, and inclusion, uh, let's strip that away. Um, these consultancy firms, I don't remember these fuckers existing. Can you point me to them existing when video games were made in the 80s or the 90s or the aughts? Uh, where were they? Right? If they're so integral in the development of a video game and characters and world building and uh, the mechanics and the important things that are really resonating with the audience. Uh, where were these fuckers then? This seems like a recent invention. I don't know. It seems like a group of people that have come in to exploit what they see as a niche or a weakness and then use it to bully and harass or blackmail to make money. And then, of course, their good buddies in journalism will always cover their ass like they did last time. I don't know. Chat, can you, can you point me to it? Because I don't fucking remember them existing at all before. It's almost like this is just some bullshit thing that got 
plucked out of thin air and made into a reality. God, I keep looking at chat. I don't. Nobody's pointing me to any of these companies that previously existed. Uh, of course, then it goes in to talk about bad actors. It talks about how gamers are shit. We always love how gamers are shit here, folks. It talks about how they, you know, they misunderstand. They don't understand. They're not forcing diversity. It's just happening naturally. Can you believe they printed this? Let me I'll just show you so you know I'm not making it up. Sweet Baby Inc. isn't forcing diversity. It's happening naturally. Naturally. Um, put this stuff up to your higher ups. Naturally. And if they don't see the value in what you're asking for when you ask for consultants, when you ask for research, go have a coffee with your marketing team and just terrify them with the possibility of what's going to happen if they don't give you what you want. Yes, that's so natural. It's so organic. My God, did you feel how organic that was, chat? Oh, that's organic. <laughs> uh, they're arguing they somehow force game studios to include diverse characters and storylines. The reality is vastly different. It's a narrative design company, meaning most of its work is focused on writing story and dialogues. Oh, so that's why all the stories and dialogues are shit. <laughs> I need you to make this story in dialogue, but it can only be spoken by a black lesbian lady. But I'm not forcing you to put a black lesbian lady in it. I'm just saying that you need to put this dialogue in there that is spoken by a black lesbian lady. Oh, I see. I see how it works. I see how it works. That's sneaky. Aren't you sneaky? <laughs> oh... Then I believe there was an article, too, put out by, was it PC Gamer? There was another just shit bomb of an article. Let me see if I can find this. Oh, here we go. Here we go. A company called Sweet Baby Inc. has become the target of anti-woke gamers because it offers consultancy work and industry standard service that's been normal for years. Oh, they're consultants, not tired. How many years have they been normal for, Harvey? Let me see. Uh, Kotaku reports, 70,000. Let's see. Other words. Sci-fi, uh, climate change. This is all great. No, just tell me how long this has been the standard. Oh, work is a complete non-event. Okay, fantastic. Let's see. It starts with an edit dev team. An idea. This is all great and there. Yep, yeah, this is fantastic. Vague, but fantastic. Obvious. Uh-huh. I've just, I'm, it's really weird. It's just standard, he told me. But I'm, where, where is it standard again, Harvey? Because I, just point me to when this happened in the 80s and the 90s. I, I don't see. Picking a fight doesn't matter. Oh, no, look, I don't see it anywhere in your fucking article. All I want you to do, Harvey Randall, Harvey Randall, please do this. Just show me these companies existing anywhere in the year 1980s, 1990s, the double aughts, or fuck, even the 2010s. Just show it to me. Show me how normal and standard it is, right? Because it's normal, standard business practice. Clearly, clearly it's there. It's so obvious. So obvious you can show me, right? Ah, so of course, this has led to everybody, I'm hoping, I'm, God, I'm hoping, making jokes saying this is Gamergate too. I don't know. I know we've got people like Asmogold, I think, is covering this quite a bit on his Twitch. I see a lot of different people, you know, you know, outlets like Games Nosh and others that are covering it a lot. A lot of people just pointing out these companies. I don't think there's anything wrong with pointing out these companies. It's my understanding that a lot of the things that Sweet Baby Inc. has been uh, associated with have turned out to be really shitty products. So if that's the track record, yeah, as a, a consumer, I'd want to be informed. I'd want to know that their consultancy, quote unquote, leads to bad products. I mean, the reality with gaming is this. The age of milk and honey is over. Your microtransactions and your monetization schemes and your gotcha mentality, right? It's reaching its end course. You made a lot of money. A lot of ridiculous money, especially during the lockdowns, because people needed a hobby. There were a lot of companies that did. I mean, look at Warhammer. Do you know how much their prices have increased on their fucking figurines? When you look at the price of shit uh, over the last four years, how uh, they've like doubled and tripled prices of that shit? So you've got game companies, and now they want to make uh, atrocious, shitty products, and they want to monetize them as much as they can, and they want to microtransact them as much as they can, thinking it's just going to be unending profits but it's just not the case a lot of games that have come out especially over the last couple of years have been shit they've been fucking 
awful. They underdeliver. Everything is patched. There's always a day one patch and then a week one patch and then a month one patch because you're releasing products that are broken and people are sick of buying them. People are sick of getting nickeled and dimed. Yeah, there are one or two gotcha games out there. There are one or two uh, multiplayer games that are out there with microtransactions that people will play. But that's it. They're not going to keep falling for the same thing again as you keep trying to include it and saying single player games are dead, traditional multiplayer games are dead. As you keep fucking thrusting on people, really shitty games, and then overlaying the slathering on top of diversity to try to make people feel shamed if they don't buy it. You become Hollywood. You're bloated. You're spending hundreds of, mil or hundreds of millions of dollars and half a decade to make a game that by the time it comes out, its mechanics and its functions and its gimmicks are old, passe, and shit, and nobody wants to touch them. And for every Harry Potter game that comes out or Dark Souls or Elden Rings, there are 50 games that come out that are fucking awful. There's another Redfall that comes out. Why am I, as a console gamer, getting a game that can't hit 30 frames per second consistently, that isn't even 1440p, let alone 4 fucking K, on machines that were sold to me as being that? Why am I being sold games that are just getting released on PC and are better fucking running on a PC than on the dedicated console that they were built for? It's been four years of shit. So, you know, after being robbed repeatedly and seeing the trends in gaming and seeing that people are just tired of it as you fire half your employees because they have positions that don't do anything for your game development, you're going to reach out to narrative companies and, uh, what, try to trick us into buying them? Well, this game, with these microtransactions, this shitty Hollywood-like blockbuster AAA pile of crap, um, it's better now because there's a black woman in it or this gay guy in a wheelchair. That's not going to work. I'm sorry. Suicide Squad is shit. Redfall was shit. These games shouldn't be getting released. They're awful games. And people are sick of losing their money. You know, this economy is crap, right? I know everybody talks about, um, I don't mean to get political, but I know everybody has a conversation about inflation and politics and where things are going. But I think most people would agree that shit's overpriced right now. It's hard to make rent. Groceries are expensive. Shit adds up quickly. People are tightening their belts. So when they look at their hobby, they want to get bang for their buck. They want to enjoy the product they buy as a consumer, and they want to know that they're getting value for money. So I see nothing wrong with a Steam group or a Steam curator putting a list out that says, hey, every game these people touch is shit. It's a waste of your money, and you're going to get fucked if you buy from them. I think of that as a, a good service to provide to your average person. Is it possible some of the games aren't going to be totally crap? Sure. But if the majority are shit, there's nothing wrong with what they're doing. And seeing the reaction of these people trying to punish them by getting the Steam Curator page pulled down, getting their account banned, having journalists write about how great this company is now people don't understand what they do, even though they're on videotape blatantly speaking and saying, no, we totally blackmail people and thread them. <laughs> do, you, do you think that's going to work? I mean, I, I, I don't know what the gimmick here or the game is. I don't know what your game plan is, I guess. It, not that it matters. I mean, every article I've seen over the last month or two has been uh, company after company slashing 10%, 20%, 30% of their employees. Must mean they're not selling video games, huh? Must mean the games they're making aren't that great, huh? Must mean the cost of development is bloated to shit and positions were created for no other reason than just to be positions that paid. But it's always the consumer. It's always the, the little guy's fault. It's always the gamer. Us dirty gamers, because we hate those whores. Gamer girl, go home. I gotcha. I gotcha. Just uh, <laughs> second verse, same as the first. Yeah, I've heard this song before. Uh, so that's your Gamergate 2 chat. I don't know what's going to happen with it. I hope that curator page... Let me get, let me wish it a Nick Ricada, but earnestly, I wish that I wish that Steam Curator page a million subscribers. <laughs> you know, but I, I genuinely mean that. I'm being I'm being straight up with you about that. What was it? Yeah, two hundred twenty-eight thousand, quarter of a million people. That's a pretty good chunk. That's a nice, sizable chunk of customers. Quarter of a million people. It's not bad.
trying to get the guy's fucking Steam account banned. What the fuck? I believe also, I, I think, if I remember this correctly, and I could be wrong, that the uh, person that wrote the Kotaka article, uh, the it was the Kotaka one or one of the other ones, uh, they were sharing it at the very least. Uh, talking about Sweet Baby Inc. And somebody said, oh, well, you know, this, this DEI stuff is racist towards white people. And their response was, you can't be racist towards white people. That's impossible. And that really started its the next level of shitstorm. <laughs> I love how they say we're not woke and we're not forcing ourselves. But then they go around saying shit like that. Or they've got this other woman who's on camera talking about scaring people into doing what they want. It's just remarkable. And I understand, too, that the company, Sweet Baby Inc., one of the founders would happen to be like one of Zoe Gwynn's five guys. Am I understanding that right? So there's like layer on layer, you know, responsible for or one of the people was like fucking with, um, I think it was the Fine Young Capitalist was the group of game developers that got fucked with for not towing the line back in the day. But this person fucked with them and now they're associated with this company. I bet you they make a lot of money. There's a lot of money to be made in this sort of shit. There's a lot of money to be made in this consultancy stuff. You give that rubber stamp that a company needs so it can just, you know, tick off a box. They love it. Now, a corporation's a soulless monster. That's how they should be, to be honest. But they don't care about anything. They care about making money. So for some reason, right now, as it exists, most corporations really believe that if they, they put up this facade of, you know, this kind of wokeism or, you know, this SJW stuff or, you know, this, this very hyper-liberal mentality, uh, that that's going to generate more revenue. That's why they always have the little flags up. That's why they always celebrate all these holidays. That's why they're obnoxious on Twitter and other social media platforms. But I'd like you to ask yourself how genuine that is. Why don't you go ask a company like Sony or Microsoft, why is it that they'll have gay pride parades and they'll show that in America and Europe, but when they go to the Middle East, those disappear? Why is it Sony and Microsoft and Capcom and all these others We'll talk about how much they love LGBTQ and how they are diehard for that and how they love diversity and inclusion. But the second it comes to, like, Saudi Arabia or Iran, all that shit fucking disappears. You're not going to see that advertised anywhere over there. It's real interesting. It's almost like they don't believe it at all. That they, It's just a marketing gimmick. So to have a fucking company, again, going back to this, that gives you that rubber stamp, and just basically you can say, oh, yeah, no, I love gay people. See, I worked with uh, sweet baby, whatever the fuck. Uh, that to them right now in their mindset, that's valuable. That's that's capital when it comes to swaying consumers. In fact, I would like to make that a challenge. You know, if, for any of the people out there, uh, pass this idea along for me, chat, because I'm not going to get involved in any of this shit. Well, why don't we make that a challenge? If they really believe this, if all these journalists and game developers and consultancy companies really believe in the diversity and equity and inclusion, I want to see them make their main marketing thrust in the heart of Saudi Arabia. I want the next video game, Billboard, to be released in Saudi Arabia to, ha to feature two black gay men eating each other's assholes with the tag word diversity. And the Sony PlayStation symbol behind it. And I want that billboard in the heart of Saudi Arabia's biggest fucking city. You need to fight for equality. And we need to fight where it matters. No more hiding from it. It's time to go to Saudi Arabia and spread the gospel of the new word of wokeism. <laughs> yeah, and a gay flag too. I saw somebody chant gay Just... Two black guys just go into town on each other like it's lunch. There's a, it's beautiful. There's nothing wrong with it. Live your best life. That's what the billboard should say. Live your best life, Sony PlayStation. Black guys eating each other's assholes. Welcome to Saudi Arabia. And maybe you have Kratos in the background. Give it a thumbs up. Right? And Laura Croft, give it a peace sign. But she doesn't have big tits because big tits are sexist and that's terrible. So she's flat-chested. Maybe Vosh will like her. He'll think it's a, a goblin girl. So we've got a flat-chested Laura Croft giving a, giving a, a peace symbol. And you got Kratos giving a thumbs up. And two black guys just eating shit out of each other's asses. Living their best life, Sony PlayStation. Welcome to Saudi Arabia. Should be right at the fucking airport. First thing you see when you come to Saudi Arabia. <laughs> they should. These billboards should line the road to Ramadan. Okay? The whole Middle East. 
when you go on your religious Islamic par- uh, pilgrimage, you should see nothing but video game ads about gay sex. Prove to me that you really are committed to it. And I want, I want Sweet Baby Inc. on the ground in those places convincing people. These, you know, Sweet Baby Inc. should be sent to every mosque in the Middle East to explain to them why homosexual sex is the best thing ever and why they need to play video games to understand that. So respectful and uh, <laughs> so respectful of the culture. But no, ask yourself that. Uh, serious question, though. Why is it these companies, when it comes to anywhere that's uh, like America or South America or Europe, will do this? But when it comes to the Middle East and some regions of Asia, uh, they fucking refuse to do it. I don't think they're committed. I think they might be making things up, chat. I don't know. I don't know. But I'm an old sick man. I can't fight this fight. I'll have to leave it up to you young kids to save video games. <laughs> You need to save video games, folks. Otherwise, um, where is it? Where is it? There we go. Otherwise, we're all going to just end up crazy having cat lady weddings to ourselves. That's what happens. You don't save video games this time. It's not the end of journalism. We're all going to be posting about our imaginary weddings because we're all just eggless. We're dead eggers. Dead egger cat ladies drinking wine out of boxes, crying to ourselves. That's that's the fucking future. Poor Anita. Jesus Christ. I feel so bad for her. <laughs> oh, God. I is this this is fake, right? Please, somebody, please tell me this is fake. I really actually feel terrible for her. <laughs> it's so bad. <laughs> Woo! Oh my god! <clears throat> but no, it seems pretty cut and dry to me. Uh, that that's my take on it. People had asked. I figured I'd cover it. I know it's it's everywhere. It seems really blatant, really cut and dry. I I you know. I see a lot of people talking about it. Make your curator groups, you know, stay informed on where you spend your money. That's great. And uh, just laugh at it. This this industry is in its own. Even without this happening, this gaming industry has got so many fucking problems right now when it comes to just the business model itself that I don't know what they're going to do. I mean, I really think that probably the next generation is going digital only. And the last vestige of a physical ownership is going to be like Nintendo. Which you, you think sounds good, but Nintendo can be real assholes <laughs> when they've got no real competition. Look what they're doing with the emulators. What is it, Yuzo or whatever it is? Didn't they just get everybody's personal information? Everybody's going to get fucking sued now, I'm sure, because they got they pirated fucking Zelda or some shit. Oh, God. Why can't you, why can't you just enjoy a hobby? Why can't you just have a fun hobby? Everything's got to just, just nickel and dime me to death. Or it's got to be taken over and turned to shit. You just can't have your escapism. God, maybe at the part, you know, maybe at the center of it, there's like some core component where these people are so fucking miserable that they want you to be miserable too. Like they hate you because you have escapism. Like you find joy in escaping the nightmare that is reality, but they just can't do it because they suck at video games and they don't want to make gunpla models. And they don't want to uh, just do any of the shit that you might be into. Fuck Warhammer. Fuck all that. So instead of finding something they enjoy, they just want to drag you into the gutter with them. Because if they have to suffer in reality, you do too. I'm sure there's something to that. It's part of it, I'm sure. Oh, what are you going to do? I'm sorry, Chad. You're scrolling by awfully fast. Let me see here. Let me see. What am I being told? Go check something. So let me go check something. Oh, my God. Everything's slow as shit. So I'm not. So nothing's loading up, of course. Oh, let's see. Somebody said, go check Twitter. Go read Twitter. I've got one guy saying, uh, the the single most stale take on Gamergate 2 ever. Well, I I guess they disagree. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> I thought that was a pretty, I thought that was a pretty even-handed take on what I see happening. I guess that's a stale take. I don't know what to tell you, folks. <laughs> I'm sorry. I failed to have let you down. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, no. I'll just have to stick 
to sell it hits. Oh, I see Matt's in the chat. Hello, Matt. Have you been summoned back to the battle? <laughs> You've been summoned back to the battle. Oh, boy. Okay. Just uh, move that out of the way there. Sorry, I'm just cleaning up my little area, making sure I didn't miss any articles. I'll cover the PC article, or PC Gamer article, and then Kotaku. Anyway, there's my take. You got my take. See, it's not all doom and gloom. It's not all piss and vinegar either. It's just what I saw happen, what I suspect will continue to happen. I just find it really fucking amusing that the, they're trying to present this as they're not forcing anybody, and then you literally have video of them forcing people to do shit. Maybe huddle up and uh, try better. Try a little better next time. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. It's pretty terrible. Uh, kind of feels like I have, Matt says, but I just want to play Helldivers. I hear Helldivers 2 is actually pretty fun. I hear people are having a lot of enjoyment with that. I might actually check that out myself. To have a, a, a game you could just play where you just load it up and go shoot shit. Is it pretty straightforward? Or there's, or did they load it with microtransactions? I don't really know. Chad, is Helldivers 2 pretty good? Or am I being tricked? Uh, Helldivers is fun, somebody said. Uh, it is, it is now. A uh, good game. Uh, for Super Earth. I like that cheesy sort of sci-fi shit. I really like uh, Earth Defense Force. So if it's got that kind of vibe, I know it's not the same gameplay, but if it has that vibe to it, where it's very tongue-in-cheek kind of shit, I enjoy that. Oh, wow, you all seem to really fucking enjoy it. Oh, let's go see how many people are playing it on Steam. Is it pretty popular? Let me go take a look. Uh, let's look under... Well, it's number one on top sellers. That's a good start. Well, let's take a look here. Uh, where are we going? Community Hub. Well, half a million basically in play right now. That is a lot of people. Seems to be doing well. Very high reviews. I love it when somebody's got a ridiculous amount of hours on there and they're like, yeah, it's pretty good. I put it, I put it in 4,000 hours. It's okay. Yeah, yeah, it's a little bit. It's good. It's all right. Oh, yeah, it's right at the top there, isn't it? Very positive with 202,000 reviews. So there you go. Yeah, maybe I'll check that out then. 